be familiar with, and that is to put a GPS on one place and leave it there. And then record the position of this GPS station over time. Here is an example. One is in the Aegean Sea. So this is Greece here. This is the Northern Africa. And this is Turkey. And these black lines show us the velocity field. Okay, so at every point it shows you the velocity of the crust, of the Earth's surface, at that particular point. And what you can see here that there is a clear circular motion, which of course corresponds to the motion of the North Anatolian plate at that point, but also that here in the southern part of the Aegean Sea, the vectors, the velocity, is much faster than here in the northern part. Therefore, the northern part of the Aegean is coming down like this, and the southern part is moving away from it. There is a clear difference in velocity, and therefore the Aegean Sea is at the moment extending. It is undergoing extension, and this is why it is now a sea with just the small remnants of the old mountains sticking out of it, being the Caiclides Cycladis Islands. And here is another picture from the uh, North American plate, where you can clearly see relatively slow motion a little bit to the west, and then when you have gone across the San Andreas Fault, the motion is clearly to the northwest. We have crossed a very sharp plate boundary there. So, the next very important uh, tool that we use in tectonics is the analysis of topography, of altitudes. We have already seen that there are, of course, these major classes, uh, the land which is not very high, but above sea surface, and then the big abyssal plains, which are about 4,000 meters. Um, and this is the very famous artist drawing at the beginning of the plate tectonics revolution of how, based on not so many data, uh, the scientists have thought that the bottom of the sea looks like. At that time, this was a major breakthrough because nobody knew how the sea bottom looked like. Nowadays, we have uh, very, very detailed uh, elevation models for the floor of the sea, but of course also for land. Unfortunately, uh, and, and this, is, this has been the case uh, for a number of aspects of uh, plate tectonics, the data initially have been collected for military purposes. And after some time, they can be released uh, for scientific analysis. So, here is a modern picture of a continental area. This is the uh, northwestern part of Africa. This is uh, the Arabian uh, continent and here is Turkey and this is the south of Italy and if you visualize your data well then you can already see that the topography is related to tectonic processes for example of course you all know that this here the Red Sea is an oceanic rift the two continents have separated sufficiently to form oceanic crust in between them and it is not a surprise that at the edge of this rift, the land is high. In the lecture on rifting, I will explain to you why that is the case. And here, where um, the Eastern African Rift is moving this part of Africa away, it is again not a surprise that the land is higher there. And of course, the same holds for this collision belt here and here the land is high because of the continental uh, or oceanic collision. You can measure the surface of the Earth by uh, satellites, but what may be not so um, well known to you, that you can also measure the depth of the sea from satellite. And this is a famous picture, again, which was released uh, from military data a couple of years ago. Um, this here is the elevation of the sea surface measured very, very accurately 
from satellites. Okay, so if you would look with a centimeter resolution at the sea surface, this is somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, then you actually see that the sea surface is higher and lower depending on where you are. And this has to do with the gravity field of the Earth, where gravity is higher, the sea is pulled a little bit closer to the center of the Earth. So, in fact, the seafloor morphology is reflected at the height, in the height of the ocean water, which is actually quite remarkable. And here is a global version of the same map, which was released in 1990. And you can very clearly see the oceanic ridges, you can see the subduction zones, and these highs, these bulges, just before the subduction zones, we will explain these highs, these bulges, in the lecture on subduction. These data, by the way, were, were collected initially to guide the submarines of the United States uh, Navy, because submarines are not allowed to make noise, they have to be very, very silent, and the way to navigate for these submarines is to measure the gravity field of the Earth, and if you have a very accurate map of the gravity field, you can actually navigate using this gravity field. So satellite images are very important, and nowadays these satellite images can be found in time-lapse. So we just don't, don't have just one image, but we have several images. For example, the GPS it was, of course, a good example where we can see that the GPS stations are moving over time with a few centimeters every year. But here is Mount St. Helens, which erupted in 1980 with a huge, huge blast. Um, and this is how Mount St. Helens look like from space with a digital elevation model before the explosion. And a few days after the explosion, it looked like this. So we can now make digital elevation models and show the changes in elevation over time. And the most dramatic changes in elevation are in volcano eruptions, but also around earthquakes. So the next picture is called a radar interferogram. And what it is, is that it is two elevation measurements of the Earth's surface before and after an earthquake. By the way, all of the pictures that I've shown you, all of the tools will come back in the tectonics lectures again. So if you didn't have time to write down everything I said, um, you, you will hear about this uh, more. So what is this here is one of the fault lines in Southern California. It is the famous Hector Mine earthquake. And the color here is the displacement with a maximum of 10 centimeters, okay? So all these different color fringes are lines of constant vertical displacement. And what you basically see here is that the earthquake moves the Earth's surface like this, and one side is down and the other side is up. And just like with many of the previous data, you can calculate what it should be, making assumptions and making models, and then you can compare your calculations with what has been uh, measured. And this is, of course, the basics of good physical science, measurements, predictions, and comparison of them. And this is the status or the state of tectonics at the moment. Okay, yet another tool is seismic reflection. Seismic reflection is a very, very important tool to study the upper 10, 15 kilometers of the Earth crust. And what seismic reflection does is it creates little earthquakes, but not by using the natural earthquakes, but you actually create your earthquakes by 
making a dynamite explosion at the surface or you use a vibrator to put sound waves into the earth crust or if you are on the sea you have air guns to put pulses of uh, waves into the earth and then you record them and process the data to show you the reflections